Thank you for thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for joining and opening the Yield Farming Academy in the first lesson. Um, I think we can start. I made a brief introduction about the Yield Farming Academy itself and the Rich Protocol. Maybe you guys you want to share something from your background because Vlad is our uh, advisor of the Leech Protocol, and I would like to know more about the Pavlov. Guys, it's the, the stage is yours. Uh, so for me, I always hear on the AMA sessions with Leech Protocol. Uh, as you know, I uh, DeFi DGen. I started farming in uh, 2020. I'm in crypto since 2017. Uh, oh, I remember Bitcoin talk forums uh, and uh, all of those uh, interception of ambassador programs, uh, which was called bounty companies. So we are here today to talk about the wallets, but I want to give uh, a word to Pablo. And uh, uh, Pablo, please share us your product and your experience. Uh, uh, how long you're in crypto, what you are doing now, what you did before. Uh, you're the guest today, so we want to know more about you. Yes, yes. Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, yes, my name is Pavlo and I'm uh, currently working on the crypto protocol and I'm in the crypto space for more than five years and for the five years we've been, bu we've been building the products for the uh, custodial services, helping to accepting payments, we've been creating some uh, stuff um, for our contractors on demand on the, cri on the crypto products and uh, recently, like uh, more than one year ago, we decided to change how the industry of the crypto works for the businesses and we are to shift the way how businesses work with the crypto payments to deliver them a non-custodial service. And so I can say that I'm a DeFi DGEN because uh, I'm uh, not exactly in all this uh, uh, investing stuff in crypto. I always wonder, follow, I follow a lot of uh, bloggers, uh, influencers that uh, be trying to become millionaires overnight, uh, trying to stake something, restake and the yield farming. And I can say that I know a lot about all this stuff. I, I do follow all the trends, but I um, I can't say that I'm usually t trying to repeat this. I'm just how to say the uh, how to say following this stuff to be uh, to to aware of what happens in, in crypto. So <laughs> uh, it would be great to hear about you from from your guys uh, about the farming academy. Maybe I'll be one of your student because <laughs> yes thank you for your presentation i hope you will be one of our students because the yield farming academy itself is the series of educational content first right so it's gonna be like lessons quests quizzes ama sessions and we will try to cover all the details for the yield farming i mean from the so from the very beginning to the more uh automated and maybe like complicated yield farming strategies that Vlad, for example, is doing for his own and what we are trying to do and automate in the in the app, leechprotocol.com, the app itself, right? So we will have, I don't know, probably dozens of lessons and you can get the badges uh, when you will learn all the lessons and complete all the quests. And obviously the more badges you, you will get, the more chances to get some cookies you will have. And right now we are just in the beginning and we are kind of celebrating the launch of the, of the Academy and uh, we are here for the AMA session. And um, I think we need to cover kind of a couple of basic questions today, like how to choose and create a wallet. And I think this is the, the, the most important part for the yield farming. Uh, what, are the best, <laughs> what are the best wallets and how to, how to choose and how to create them? Maybe some some details uh, that our audience, farmers and leachers should be aware of, Vlad. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can start and uh, Pasha, please feel free to interrupt me wherever you want and uh, you can continue or add your stories uh, uh, or I can give you a word uh, after. So uh, the thing is that uh, we first should understand that we have uh, two different type of wallets, the custodial wallets and non-custodial wallets. Uh, and um, uh, how to understand that? So on Binance, you usually use, uh, you always use uh, custodial wallets. That means that uh, you don't have any access to the private key or uh, seed 
of your wallet on your account. And uh, if you're using MetaMask, for example, or I remember uh, that was called my Azure wallet, you are using non-custodial wallet. That means that you are able to uh, operate with your private key and seed phrase. And that's the first, dif that, that's the first difference um, of wallets uh, and services uh, for crypto custody uh, in, in our crypto world. Especially in DeFi, we are mostly using non-custodial wallets. Uh, why? Because, because of MTGOX, because of the FTX. Uh, uh, so you are have the control of your funds. Uh, yeah, that's, the, the funds may cost zero because uh, you never know what token you're buying and uh, what will be in the future, but you still have the control of these funds. And that's the difference, because uh, on the regular crypto exchange uh, with the custodial wallets, uh, you also may buy uh, some shit coins and uh, then uh, receive negative p and uh, and you have zero. Uh, but in that time, you are also can be just scammed by uh, Sam Bankman uh, or uh, some hackers uh, or even the founders of uh, the exchange. So um, I, um, I want to give a word to Pavel. Uh, Pavel, what exact wallets are you using? What the famous one uh, for you? Are you using different wallets or you're using just one wallet? How it works? Yes, uh, I want to add uh, on your topic that you told that you can be exposed to the uh, like uh, vulnerabilities on the exchange if you store uh, funds on your on the exchange. That exchange can be scanned or hacked or something. But I can say that uh, I uh, launched the Twitter uh, just before joining this AMA session, and uh, maybe you've seen the 21 million have been stolen from the non custodial wallet uh, by hacker, uh, and uh, even. I, I can say that I'm a bit experienced user, and I know how all this hack is being happened, how it happens on the Twitter. Everybody, I, I assume that we uh, in, in, in the crypto space, uh, I receive a lot of uh, spam uh, on the uh, Twitter, like mentioning you that uh, about the airdrops when you connect your wallet to the website, you get the signature, and your wallet is being drained, and you lose, you can lose all your funds, and. I know how it works. I know how it happens. I know that you you don't need to click on this. But last week, <laughs> I'm been I've been exposed by the CEO of the famous crypto API. His account had been uh, sim swapped, and hackers uh, made the uh, spam uh, uh, messages to the uh, to their clients uh, with the text like uh, "Join our beta. You've been chosen like uh, of our few of our beta test testers of our new product." And I had the uh, I had the history of messages with this account, and uh, you know I and I launched this website. I connected my wallet, and they stolen uh, seven dollars equivalent of Ethereum from my wallet. So uh, even much? the huh what seven dollars seven dollars I, I connected not my uh, main wallet, but uh, I. Uh, I had something stopped me from connecting my 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 my, my main wallet <laughs> to this website. I don't know. I reconnected my another wallet to test this, and uh, hackers uh, stolen uh, seven dollars from my account uh, from the uh, by by sim swapping the uh, uh, the Telegram account of the uh, CEO of the famous uh, crypto API. Mm -hmm. So. Even even experienced users uh, are exposed to the hacks, and I can say that all these uh, custodial, non-custodial uh, things are not the panacea. So you know, you need to be the you need to be aware how it how it works. Even okay, I'm I, I'm aware of how it, how it works, but I'm, I've been exposed. Uh, so that's why we need these all these academies, all these MMA uh, sessions uh, to educate users how to use the the crypto. Especially if uh, they are, if it's a non-custodial experience, yes, it's uh, still a uh, new technology. Technology with uh, where you uh, in ninety-nine percent cannot revoke your keys if you lost your access. Some guys even store the uh, their twelve words of the seed phrase uh, on the uh, how to say on the paper uh, and store them like uh, under their uh, phone cover. So. Uh, I personally use the uh, Trust Wallet just because of the user uh, user interface, and yes, I know about the hack of the uh, uh, Atomic Wallet, and so I can say that there is a big difference in between wallets. Just uh, you need to 
I, I would recommend to use open source wallets because your community need to, how to say, to prove somehow that uh, this wallet uh, do not uh, share your private key through the internet. And so that's why I currently use Trust Wallet. I use often MetaMask. I tried a lot of, uh, not, not a lot of you, of the uh, MPC wallets where you with the social recovery features, but I haven't uh, tested yet anything from the account abstraction. So, how do you know that Trust Wallet uh, not share your private key anywhere? You know, just because of the reputation uh, in the community. The reputation of FTX was also good. <laughs> uh, that's that's the good thing. Uh, that's a Pavlo that's a tricky question that, for everyone to start thinking about using the trust wallet. Yeah, the thing is because uh, uh, trust wallet is a closed source wallet. So um, that's in the one hand that's uh, a goal, and uh, the Binance now the owner of the trust wallet want to uh, they like have a license to uh, make it closed source and to operate it closed source and that's okay to operate uh, closed source software but um, the thing is that uh, the more trust in the uh, uh, crypto world is uh, behind uh, open source wallets what it what it exactly so uh, that's the electrum electrum is an open source wallet uh, also uh, the wallets which have the code base opened on uh, a github they are open source that's what it means uh, and uh, from different perspectives uh, a bit less hacks uh, in our in our crypto world uh, uh, behind the open source wallets. So here we have two rules uh, at first. So this is the non-custodial and custodial wallets. Custodial wallets is the wallets uh, on uh, exchanges. So you don't have any access to your private keys and seed phrase. Non-custodial wallets is wallets which allow you to access uh, the private key and seed. Then open source and closed source. The closed source wallet uh, is a wallet uh, which you are using with a trust like trust wallet that's why they call trust and you use it with a trust that they are not sharing your seed phrase with any back backend software with any anything uh, and the open source wallets the wallets where you uh, can like can be baked by all your developers all your users which are already confirmed that this is the open source and the uh, and everything is okay with the code base of, of this wallet if you're not a programmer. If you're a programmer, you can do it by yourself. So that's the uh, first two rules of choosing a wallet. First, understand uh, if you want to go deeper inside of the DeFi, then non-custodial wallet is better for you. Uh, if you want to just operate with the crypto, buy something, sell something, not for the whole amounts of money, not skin in the game, you can use custodial wallets and uh, Binance, but uh, that's uh, all uh, baked on your trust. And the second is uh, open source and closed source. So if you want to participate with DeFi protocols and want to be sure that no one knows your seed phrase and private key, open source is better. Uh, but we have a lot of really good wallets with good user interface, which are closed source, like Trust Wallet, uh, like was atomic wallet uh, and uh, that's also the second difference thank you for sharing your experience and i got like a simple question probably so for the yield farming what are the top three wallets that you use on your own obviously this is not any kind of the recommendation or advice for our listeners but still it's going to help everyone to understand what are the top three to try if they have not tried the wallets for the yield farming i mean itself uh, from my side, I use MetaMask. I also use a uh, very, very niche wallet. It's called Vigvam Wallet. Uh, that's the, the wallet which built my best friend. And uh, it's really good with the UI, but uh, it's still not audited. Uh, uh, and also, I using uh, for for some... Uh, I using the mobile MetaMask wallet, so I have a MetaMask in extension, and I have MetaMask on mobile. That's that's Thank my wallet. You. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Pablo, anything to add to this list? 
Yes, uh, I'm, a, I'm the old school guy, and I do use, uh, I still use uh, exchanges to store part of uh, my assets. I still use uh, like uh, just the wallet that has been trusted by community. I used the Electrum a few years ago, but just be the only problem with Electrum is that uh, they support only the Bitcoin network. What am I right? The, it hasn't yeah. changed for a few years, only for Bitcoin, right? Just, just the Bitcoin. It's a cold yeah. wallet uh, for the Bitcoin storage, yeah. the open source and non-custodial, but only yeah. for the Bitcoin. I, I used this, but I thought that maybe in a few years they made something uh, moving forward to support any other blockchains. But okay, on on the Bitcoin. Uh, so I used this for maybe four years ago, uh, just because uh, we used to how to say to work with the HD wallets uh, in our products and we needed some kind of interface uh, to some kind of somehow verify to somehow store the uh, derivative addresses so it's like a bit complex thing so I would rather not use this on the daily my daily basis just because uh, on the daily basis uh, I uh, I need the gr- a good user experience in terms of uh, in terms of variety of networks, in terms of uh, different uh, features like uh, built-in swaps, because uh, personally, I am uh, how to say I don't like to connect my wallet even to one inch, just because uh, I don't have the one inch uh, link and the bookmarks. And when I t- when I uh, put the one inch uh, to the Google, I'm not sure whether it's a correct link. So it's it's always stress for me. And uh, the only <laughs> the only solution for me not to be stressed is just to use the trust wallet with the built-in swaps. Um, and so you. I, just to build on, uh, build on the trust, but uh, to uh, if you have, for example, more than one million net worth and you need to and you need secure storage, I would rather recommend you to use uh, some kind of uh, MPC based wallets for the uh, like uh, enterprise solutions for for this, where you have uh, hopefully last few years we've seen the shift in the uh, in the technology of the managing the seed phrases and we see the Kless wallets. Uh, uh, in this space, uh, MPC wallets with the social recovery features, but it, it, usually it depends on your on a, a, a set that you operate. So on your on your daily basis. For, the for, for me, trust wallet is enough, and few accounts on the different exchanges. But if you're a DeFi DGen, for example, you st- you need to have uh, near uh, wallets for wallet for near wallet for Solana wallet for, for example, not their Bitrum, just because of the, it's MetaMask. Uh, what, what what the specific wallets? Uh, what are the specific wallets? For example, for uh, uh, not the Tether. Mm, yeah. So there are a lot of uh, new blockchains ago. with their specific wallets, which you need to if you want to be DeFi, true DeFi degen, you need to you, you need to use uh, a new software, new wallets, and it's always risk. Even if it's open source, because a lot of open source libraries uh, like usually are uh, being uh, cybersecurity. Uh, not, uh, cybersecurity auditors find the bugs on the open source code, and so it leads to a lot of problems, even even in terms of enterprises. So uh, one, it's a new technology. We need to be aware of this. Want to add a few points uh, about uh, uh, near wallet and Solana wallet? Uh, some time ago. Uh, we, with our developers, uh, recognize that the near wallet um, send uh, you the seed, fry, seed phrase uh, via a mail, I guess, and uh, uh, the wallet, I, I don't remember for sure, it was a year ago, and the Phantom uh, is a Solana wallet, a uh, uh, year ago, just after the launch, uh, they stored the seed phrase inside of the operational memory of uh, your uh, computer, so um, any application had access there. And uh, that's that's the thing about the privacy and security. And uh, also to want to add a few recommendations. Uh, that's the difference. Uh, like you can be a true DGN, and at the same time you can be a true holder, like a diamond hand guy. Uh, or girl, I'm sorry. Uh, and the thing is that um, for the two digits, yes, you can use a lot of new technologies. Um, but uh, if you want to operate with uh, um, some uh, 100k more networks, uh, it's great to use just a ledger. You can connect your ledger to the MetaMask, uh, and uh, your seed phrase uh, never go out of the ledger uh, until uh, the cloud sync <laughs> from the ledger. But they didn't implement it. Yet we don't know, but yet they didn't implement it. It's still almost good solution. Then you can uh, use uh, some wallets for just uh, 
uh, storing your crypto. So Electrum is a good solution for uh, BTC, for BTC. And also, you can use uh, Trust Wallet, yes, just for the store crypto, and that's okay. The thing is that you shouldn't, you shouldn't use only one wallet for uh, all crypto life, for all your crypto life. That's the thing. That's the part of the diversification. You can use some of the wallets for the DeFi, some of the wallets for just storing crypto, some of the wallets for... Um, main your operations with uh, USDT on TRC20. Uh, and that's uh, a good uh, good narrative to, to just diversify yourself by using different exchanges. If someone died, that's okay. Usually someone died. That's the nature. Thank you for sharing your, your experience, guys. And I think that the, the biggest reason for losses of your crypto is because uh, you you go and you create like a, a, your new wallet, right? And you don't really understand how it works, like as 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 we everyone did the same probably mistake. So you do and create like a trust wallet, for example, and you start using crypto, and somehow you get some big money, right? Like maybe in a week, maybe in a month, maybe in a two years on the same wallet, but you don't really understand how how it works and what is the seed phrase probably, right? And after that you may like lose your phone for example right with your trust wallet stored and um, and this is how you lose the access to to your wallet and you don't have an access to your keys right seat phrase because you didn't really understand how it works so um how do you think um how to store maybe how to secure the store or maybe how not to forget about managing the keys not just managing your your wallet maybe you got any experience of like uh of the safe ways to store your keys from your wallets what do you think pavel go ahead yes about storing the uh, about the access to the wallets uh for me the main uh how to say uh my solution is to store the uh private key or seed phrase uh, on, in the file, which is encrypted. And you can, uh, you can store this on the, for example, USB storage, or you can send it even to your, for example, uh, email saved messages, because it's still encrypt an, an encrypted file. And to decrypt this, you still need the password. And these passwords is, uh, need to be, you need just to remember, you don't need to store this uh, password anywhere and use this only for this wallet. And it's easier to create some kind of- This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. For, uh, easy to remember uh, passcode for this file, and then to store your seed phrase under the in, inside the encrypted file. So that's that's that, that's my point of this. But now there are a lot of there we see uh, the growth of social recovery. Yes, it's uh, but it still needs you to. To remember the master password because for example you can create the wallet with your google account or for example with your biometric identification like a pass key on your local storage of your iphone but it's not the um but if you'll use your phone you will lose the access that's that's uh, why this uh, wallets uh, this offer, wallets offer uh, the master password, like the same way as, you, for example, if you use uh, some kind of uh, one password, NordPass, so you always need to create the master password, and uh, this, uh, you you still need to remember some kind of password, which should be used only solely for this uh, solely for for this wallet, and doesn't matter if it's a password to encrypt your file with a seed phrase or. Uh, it's a recovery password for your MPC wallet inside the Fireblocks, or it's a recovery for your, for example, MPC social recovery wallet. Because you still you still need to have the password just because it's it's a, it's a bit hard to remember twelve words, and if it's not twelve words, it's a private key. It's almost I think impossible to remember the private key. Mm -hmm. so, so when you, there are when you say sorry to interrupt, when you say like encrypted file, what actual steps you do to to make it encrypted? Uh, I personally use the uh, Macvoe uh, solution. Uh, Which are also closed source. 
I know, I know, but I, you know, I researched it on the Reddit, so. <laughs> but it's still Reddit uh, says it's I'm, safe, I'm right? Fine. Reddit says it's safe, right, right, right. Uh, and crypto or something like this, but you still, you still can find something open source if you are like a developer. You can find some uh, open source libraries with a lot of stars, uh, or you can verify the code on your own if you're. Uh, aware enough of the inside of cybersecurity, and you can, or, or you can ask for somebody to help you with this. And also, but you know, uh, it's uh, not the quantum cryptography, uh, quantum computer resistance still, because it's uh, just the asymmet uh, asymmetric uh, encryption, and there is no uh, standalone solution for ever for everything. So it's just the layers of the all layers of the security layer or recovery. So. I, I, I really don't know the uh, the uh, one key to solve all of this problem. <laughs> that's that's how it works for that. I'm it's, just hearing how it works. It's from honest <laughs> from your side, guys. So who is listening? You are. Uh, we welcome you to send like a comments with your messages, and uh, I think we we can have some best messages, uh, best questions for like a couple of uh, bucks, like ten bucks for a best message for a best comment and the best question still uh if you are like listening and you're shy to send ask us anything just go right now and um and and ask anything but anything to add to my my previous question about storing the keys yeah wanna wanna add the um, one uh, mention hey guys uh guys and girls uh do you remember when you copy in your seed phrase on the macbook and pasting it through your iPhone. How, how, how is this feeling called? When your seed phrase go through the iCloud services, through your router, uh, that's one of the worst scenario, how to transfer the seed phrase between your devices. Just copy it and paste it uh, uh, with uh, Apple uh, devices. Or if you are sending it in a saved messages, it's also the worst scenario. Because all of those messenger which are you use, they are centralized. Uh, yeah, yeah, they call. They they have the encryption. Blah blah blah. They are centralized. That's it. And uh, the um, good, like the good way how to transfer the seed phrase, it's to just rewrite it on the paper and then burn the paper. That's the amazing way. And the amazing way how to store your seed phrase, like you're storing your money inside of the just a regular wallet, uh, you can rewrite your seed phrase on the list of paper and then store it somewhere with the uh, same patient. But it's, like not secure. Your it's not secure. It's, it's still like a plain text, which is like not even encrypted. So you maybe need to use some kind of at least... Uh, uh, cryptography on this, uh, at least shift uh, or something. That's the fancy way. That the yeah, the good mention. Thank you. Um, that's the one of the simplest ways how you can just transfer the shit phrase. Uh, then of course you can use some uh, application to encrypt uh, with uh, uh, symmetric encryption. Uh, and the symmetric encryption is, uh, of course, uh, not uh, uh, so powerful. And in a couple of years, uh, quantum computers can broke it. Yes, yes, of course. But it's uh, still okay to use, uh, uh, like, like you say, this application from MikePo encrypted. Uh, and also, uh, I know the open source application, which called, uh, how do you know, Paranoia. PTE Paranoia and uh, this application available on uh, Apple Store uh, or you can just download it from the main website just google paranoia pte p.t.e. paranoia and you can encrypt uh, any messages uh, using blowfish or ic256 uh, algorithm and uh, uh, th that's okay that's more secure than just uh, sending it through the saved messages uh, via telegram uh, and um, for the regular user, I guess that's that's it. 
for the programmer, of course, you can uh, you can use any protocols with asymmetric encryption between your devices and create public and private key on the different devices to transfer the information. Blah blah blah. Is a low, low than one percentage of people which are using this. Maybe they are working in crypto exchanges with the cold wallets. And the final uh, final thing that I want to share that. It's great to buy another device for just signing the transactions. So you can use another phone without the internet connection or another laptop without the internet connection just for the signing the transactions if you are super care about the privacy. Uh, so, for example, you can install Electron Wallet and uh, you can sign the transaction on different device without the internet connection. Then you will transfer that transaction code with the signature which are not your private key and not your seed phrase and then you can post in public and through the internet your uh, transaction with the signature that's also the way for the retail users who really care about the privacy uh, and uh, uh, and, and uh, storing uh, the seed phrase uh, and private keys <laughs> I remember uh, I recently, uh, like a few months ago, read the uh, one conspiracy theory about the uh, um, encryption standard that uh, the advanced encryption standard 256. You heard about this. Everybody probably heard about this. And it's like uh, one of the standards that is being certified by the, by the U.S. government. And the conspiracy theory uh, says that uh, the U.S. government uh, forced uh, the... Uh, um, team of the developers of the standard to, to create the backdoor for, for or, and currently all the uh, encryption algorithms, algorithms that's being used on the internet are exposed to the backdoor of the National Security Agency, but <laughs> and <laughs> nothing can help you with this, if, but uh, it's still the conspiracy theory. But I, I read this, it, it was a popular magazine uh, that had been written about this, so we need to consider everything to, how to say, to secure our assets. Even uh, even this kind of uh, uh, vulnerabilities, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. yeah, because all this uh, software, even open source software, can have the backdoors, and that is that uh, can be noticed by even the uh, how to say the specialists in the cybersecurity. Yeah, it's like a zero day attack from the cybersecurity. Yes, yes. Like when it happens, like it happens, and you cannot do anything. But yeah, thank you for mentioning this atomic wallet issue, like a hack. And we all remember a couple of months ago, I believe it was the Ledger who announced that they will share the, the keys uh, to the to the to the uh, to the cloud, right? And um, so, like, maybe any recommendations uh, how to stay safe? Anything else um, to to know or to learn or to deep dive into for for our listeners who want to start into the guild farming? Vlad, maybe something that you can share? To, mm, I, I can recommend to use a few different wallets for uh, the DeFi. And uh, you, for example, if you're starting your journey, you are, I guess, usually start participating with uh, uh, some retro drops, uh, with uh, some different accounts where you try to make... Uh, few multi-accounts and uh, test the protocols. Uh, so just use a few different wallets, that's it. And then uh, 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 store your seed phrase uh, on the paper and uh, that's a good start. After you will have your net worth uh, more than 20K, uh, you can create uh, one super secure wallet for storing Bitcoin, for example, Electrum, or for storing Ethereum, or you can buy Ledger just for restoring Ethereum. And uh, then uh, the great thing is to have your uh, own safety protocol. So uh, somehow you are remember all of your passwords for the Gmail, for YouTube, for Twitter, for some of them. Yes, of course, a lot of people just using one password or a password suggestion from Apple. But if you're losing one device, you are not able to reveal all of your passwords. The good thing uh, here is to create your own... Uh, um, I, I can say it, it's like... Um, uh, the safety protocol. So you have a few words 
uh, from which you can create the different password for the different application or for the different wallet. It can be regular words, it can be regular numbers, it can be some uh, symbols, uh, and uh, you can use uh, the part of the naming of this service which are you using. And uh, if you create this formula, you can use this formula wherever you want and you can remember this formula. That's the main thing. Uh, ask you a question, if you will lose all of your devices, your MacBook, your iPhone, all of them, how you restore your crypto? You just have, I don't know, 50 bucks to buy a new phone on uh, any tech store. You are bought it. And then what to do? What's next? How you restore the access for the money? And if you able to answer this question, you definitely have some kind of safety protocol for your assets and uh, your own uh, um, security system with the formula of the passwords with storages uh, they even can be a public storage you can encrypt uh, the seed phrase inside of the picture or inside of the uh, some sound file or video file and that, that's that's called uh, stenography and uh, by using this uh, Technology, you can encrypt uh, uh, your private key or seed phrase or something in picture and then upload this picture to some Telegram uh, group uh, which are public and you then can access, then decrypt it. That's uh, a lot of things how you can create it. And for me, the most important thing uh, only that I able to answer for myself on the question if I lose everything from my devices how uh, how I reveal the access for the uh, wallets and for the assets so to reframe your proposal is if something happens and you find yourself in the you know in another country without any device or like um, documents etc and the question is do you have a clear path what you should do to get like back access to all of your holdings and all of your like positions or wallets right yes i think that's a fantastic question and we can ask uh, our guest pablo do you have this uh, security protocol in case of the circumstances uh, yes, yes. It's about the security protocol, as I said, so every time you create a new wallet, you need to you need to back up it somehow. And I told about the uh, how methods I utilized, and uh, currently I look forward to the uh, new technologies with the multi-party computation algorithms, so where you with the social recovery things, where but it's still growing technology and a lot of vulnerabilities in the repositories. I found so. No, not I found, like, I see that the cybersecurity companies found, uh, posts mm -hmm. uh, the researchers on these libraries. And uh, from the, uh, the on, daily, uh, on daily basis, if you are a DeFi agent and you uh, um, interact with the smart contracts, don't forget to revoke your approvals and all this, uh, like, uh, and remember all the signatures you make. You need to very, you need to check, verify all the messages you sign from your wallet, just because the uh, if it's if it's even trusted website today, it can be uh, vulnerable. It has it has it can have vulnerability in in few days, just because some uh, protocols is being exposed, hacked, uh, and so you can lose even your money that uh, uh, you approved for usage by that smart contract that is being hacked. So. Do not forget this, and uh, I don't know why uh, popular wallets still do not have these uh, revoke features uh, built in their wallets where you can just uh, uh, how to say, cancel the approvals you make to the smart contracts. We are just a simple interface and to uh, just to recheck, double check all the signatures you make, and it's still the uh, user experience feature that we require to. Uh, to to for 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 crypto space to mm -hmm. grow further because currently uh, only a few companies re just recently launched the security API that uh, you you currently if you interact with uh, some uh, uh, exposed website and or exposed smart contract and it's already a red flag to, on the Etherscan Trust Wallet will never say say you about this so. And it's a simple thing, and there are a few of the API security APIs for the wallets, but uh, I haven't seen wallet yet that implemented the security API to 
uh, warn you about the, the smart contracts is for a phishing attack or something. Mm-hmm. So a lot of space uh, to a, a, a lot of things to do for the wallets to to improve the user experience in terms of security. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your position here. And I think we are heading to the last question today. And it's going to be um, a bit, you know, not related to the wallets, but um, you see all of you uh, guests and listeners, I mean, farmers, you come up and you see, with, you know, dozens of new DeFi protocols, right? Like every day, probably, maybe not a dozen, but a couple of new protocols. And what is going to be the security protocol for you guys to check um, the eligibility, right, of the new protocol? I can start. So uh, for me, the main thing uh, to find a great opportunity, uh, the great yield farming opportunity, um, is to understand the safety of this opportunity. And uh, I will start with um, the answering a few questions just for myself about this protocol. So the first question is, uh, oh, what are the mechanics behind the protocol? Where are the yields came from? And how all of this works? If I don't understand it, um, I wouldn't use this protocol. Usually, any protocol have the documentation with a great explanation of what's behind the hood, how it works. You can start testing it for the 10 bucks and you will see the smart contracts, what are doing, uh, what are they doing under the hood. Then uh, I want to understand uh, if these protocols had an audit report for from some mm, well-known one uh, auditor's company with uh, uh, trust around the crypto world. And uh, if they do, I want to check this out. If I want to check um, if uh, the code base was updated or not, or the audit is still valid, then I will research the nature of the tokens inside of the liquidity pools or staking pools, which I will use. Uh, uh, and then after these things, I will invest only 100 bucks and uh, check for a few days what's going on. Am I really receive this APR? What's the nature of the reward token? And I have the commissions and I have the locks for my deposit. And then based on all of this information, I will decide uh, to invest more. Thank you. The same thing, uh, the other uh, like uh, influencer or blogger will do the same thing, then post this on his like a Telegram channel or YouTube and uh, other uh, 99% of their audience will just repeat this without the security protocols and all these things and from the perspective of the technical guy uh, or developer uh, yes you still can do all this uh, you can you can still uh, how to say uh, follow this checklist if you were or follow these technologies work but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, crypto became uh, crypto is more gamble for a lot of users they do uh, they just trying to repeat uh, things that they uh, found on the YouTube or looking for these all these overnight millionaires and it's a big problem and it's it's less problematic when it's a really a really technical uh, guy or developer that is experienced in this that uh, can uh, create something on its own and have experience in cybersecurity. Uh, but the uh, the worst case scenario is when just uh, uh, this blogger or influencer is being paid by this protocol for this advertising. So and that that's a big problem in the crypto space because uh, people are not aware and they are not able to understand all this documentation and they are and they understand the fear of missing out uh, on this uh, and they are not following all these security checklists. Just because they need to do everything right now, not wait for something because APR tomorrow will be lower or something like this. So that's, from my perspective, the biggest problem in this space. And that's why we need to educate uh, people not to do so. <laughs> that's, that, that's why we are here. Partially, I agree. If, if, uh, if you send me uh, the opportunity to earn and to farm my stable coins, uh, I will also skip my checklist and just invest. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how it works. Yeah, that's uh, definitely how it works. Uh, because uh, you have your, um, like, 
crypto influencers, your own crypto influencers, you have your own Telegram chats, your own people who just suggest you, hey, bro, go here, just invest, no worries. And that's the main problem. Uh, so, like, we are in the field of the zero trust. So we can we can check all of the information, but we still people, and uh, we still uh, trust of the mention of the another. That's it. Thank you. So I think we should wrap up with this first lesson of the Yield Farming Academy. And the next step uh, is going to be uh, if you're not yet in the quest, I mean, the Galaxy campaign, I've just shared it here in this Twitter space. You can click on it and find the Galaxy. So if you want to, uh, to learn more and get your first badge, uh, that you're a listener and, and you have completed the first lesson of the Youth Farming Academy. So go there and start your education. Go to our website. I mean, it's the Galaxy campaign that's going to guide you for everything that you need to do if you want to learn more about the crypto wallets. And uh, I think I need to add that the Leech Protocol, which is hosting the Youth Farming Academy, is in a closed beta stage right now at the moment. So the, the, you, you cannot get into the protocol until you are whitelisted. So if you want to get whitelisted, join our chats and ask how can you. And you need to uh, complete the, the whitelisting process. The admins, they're going to guide you. Uh, and uh, we have uh, like a promotional marketing campaign at the moment for this month, less than a month, with a great APRs. And the APRs are made just from the uh, hyper incentivization epoch that we are doing by ourselves, uh, combined with the pools that are connected right now to the protocol. So, in a nutshell, what Leech Protocol app does is uh, the app managing liquidity across chains and across pools. So, we have a number of connected pools, and you, when you deposit liquidity to one of our mixed pools, the algorithms they are looking for the best APRs and uh, they transfer liquidity using smart contracts to, to the next best APR pool based on the chosen risk level. And when they have, and if the APR goes down, for example, so the algorithm is doing the same, looking for the next best connected pool uh, with the less APR probably and move the liquidity uh, to, to the next pool. So in a nutshell, this is how the the basic version of the Leech protocol works at the moment and we are like adding new pools and we are eager to hear the feedback. This is why we do this hyper incentivization program for everyone to come and join and test and, you know, share the feedback. Uh, Vlad, you wanted to add something? Uh, no, it's pretty clear. Uh, I want to say that uh, now the Leech protocol had a hard cap of... Uh, uh, 100k and uh, it's still possible to invest uh, i guess only 10k and soon it will be ended and uh, we will wait until the next phase of the launch so uh this protocol is still in beta and we are battle testing the strategies uh with only 100k hard cap yeah thank you for this clarification for real we have 100k because we are testing at the moment uh, and we have actually completed uh, the the second security audit so you can be feeling more safe but do your own research obviously and go and check app.teachproducal.com and go like read documentations all you need or go to our chat and ask anything uh, uh, from our admins and they will guide and help you um, I think that's all thank you very much thank you Pablo thank you Vlad thank you listeners if you got any questions I'll try to look uh, to the comments at the moment. Uh, if you have any questions, you may share or we can wrap up. Let me check. Yeah, I think we are good. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for sharing your experience and um, and um, and <laughs> have a great day, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for invitation. You're doing the great thing, educating users on the DeFi space. There's still a lack of 
uh, understanding of how it works. And you, you guys, I hope, will solve this somehow. Thank you. Thank you, too. Have a great day. Bye-bye. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today.